Thank you for tuning into Unlock Me Today's live event series where we are conversing with thought leaders, founders and CEOs about their journey and how they are unlocking the true potential of folks around them. Evening, afternoon and morning based on where you are from. This is your host Prashant and before I get any further, I would like to emphasize the purpose of this event. We aim to unlock the true potential of folks who are in constrained environments, maybe not able to get enough time to connect to their role models. may be unable to break through their extremely preoccupied mundane life or maybe the internet buzzwords are adding friction to harness positive changes no matter what the reason may be there is value in staying towards the end of this event and today's topic in discussion is how to get more customers in 2024 our guest speaker is chaitanya bailey who enjoys being a lifelong learner when an opportunity presents itself he raises his hand and then figures out how he is going to accomplish what he has signed up for this habit ensured he acquired patents in imaging and pattern recognition sound engineering and agriculture an ex employee of deloitte some total with corporate experience and now with index strategy consulting private limited chaitanya welcome to the event how is it going Awesome, Prashant. Thanks you so much for this introduction. Thank you, Chaitanya. Yeah, I'm so glad here we are talking about this subject. So, Chaitanya, what is it? Why you wanted to talk about get more customers in 2024? Please elaborate and help the audience. Sure, Prashant. So, you know, I am a consultant. Mm-hmm. Now, there are four layers in which business is done. Mm-hmm. The first one is what I call the unlimited followers okay so these are people who always say customer is god mm. so apart from your skill with what you do if the customer says i want a cabaret dance in a you know restaurant you will have to get it the margins are way for thin mm. the second is the limited leadership mm-hmm. so this is where uh, there are a certain set of people who enjoy leadership for a certain market market condition okay like the hand sanitizers during covid there is a situation so they made a lot of money mm-hmm. in a certain situation people make money and then they get out yep the third one is the limited followers mm. now this is a category of business where which do well and nobody wants to see them nobody wants to ever get to business with them mm-hmm. like the lawyers the mm-hmm. police the doctors mm-hmm. all these the fourth one are those unconditional leadership mm-hmm. now every city has some restaurants no matter what is happening probably there's a bomb blast happening next door mm-hmm. these people are busy standing there and eating mm. so now there are so many businesses in every city who are in that space mm. but the only thing they do not know is how to get the sale done mm. the product is brilliant the service is brilliant and they are bleeding because they do not know how to get their customers the product is really good the mm-hmm. service is awesome mm-hmm. so i thought you know um i can do some bit of education to help such folks who who are struggling with sales and getting customers i too agree with that because in this down market uh there are companies who are flourishing as well there are businesses who are flourishing as well but not to the true potential of itself as you said that the product is good service is good but you know is acquiring a client a function of one's mindset or it is market shifts what do you think about it sure so um you go to uh, any entrepreneur all right mm-hmm. and ask him what is the difference between a customer and a client okay and That's 90% it. of the time they fail to tell you the difference I am interested to know this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. A customer basically is a commodity. Mm. Like salt, like pepper, mm-hmm. and bread. Mm-hmm. So the difference is the moment your competitor reduces the price by a few hundred rupees he's gone. Mhm. And most of the times customers are transactional value. They come to you for one transaction and then they are gone. Okay. Whereas a client is under your guidance, protection, and advice, mm. which means that you are looking long term, mm-hmm. and 
when you look long term, there is a lot more at play. So mm-hmm. it is not some story that you will utter to get that few dollars out, but mm-hmm. your reputation is at stake. Mm-hmm. You know what you say will be held against you. So you take responsibility to the advice that you provide mm-hmm. and you grow with them. Okay. And most of the time what happens when the client mindset is that you make a client, mm-hmm. you make make you help them thrive and then people see them thrive and they come to you. Mm. Now the, it's the mindset. The moment you see long term, the moment you see how you take the game long term, you win. True mm. that. True that. Because, you know, you are also showing success as the outcome and people will be able to relate to that outcome. That, hey, you know, we did this for this client for long and he's successful and you can also be successful if you follow the blueprint or the tips, suggestions and insights what one can provide in, in this thing. But, you know, is is it in a science Um to acquire customers or how do you do it or how do you help your clients uh, why don't you share some 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 recent stories or you know case sure. studies what do you have got sure so sure. this is going to be a long answer um, <laughs> so uh, but i'll break it down sure. now at any point in time in business at mm-hmm. any point in time there's only 3% of your ideal okay first um 99% of the businesses that I meet do not know who their ideal client is. Mm, the ICP. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So this is a mistake I made. So I started off with high-end augmented reality, mixed reality. I would go to every bloody shop, every place and say, I want to do this. Okay. And they would watch my products in awe with like probably they have forgotten how to breathe. Mm. But nobody would take out money from the pocket because it's expensive one two they would not believe that they would be able to sell it to their audience mm. the moment that belief does not happen the sale is not happening right now the second thing is that at any point in time three percent of your ideal customers are in a buying mode three okay. percent uh-huh. then 17 percent of your ideal customers clients are uh-huh. searching they have not made up their mind they probably have made a budget allocation, but they have not identified where to buy. Mm. 20% of your clients Mm -hmm. are feeling the pain, but they do not know what to do. They know they are bleeding, they are hurting badly, Mm. but they don't know what to do. Mm. Then the remaining 60% are numb to pain, so which means they are going extinct in the next one year. Mm. Now, what is the market doing? What are companies in the world doing is they are shouting on the top of their voice at the 3% who are willing to buy. Mm. Buy it from me, buy it from me and buy it from me. So, what happens then is your net funnel for capturing is becoming extremely small. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. And because your net is very small, you make compromises and a chance that will give you a client, you will make it a customer because you make a lot of wrong promises. This fellow has come in and some of your promises fall flat and that will be the only transaction you will have with them. Mm -hmm. And you will also carry a bad name. But what you have to do is expand your funnel to educate the remaining 37% of the people that are looking and the ones that are feeling pain. Mm. Now, imagine if you think these people who are feeling the pain are small. No, mm. they are big corporations. Mm-hmm. And this this discovery came to me as an accident. Really? Okay. <laughs> yeah. In a very, 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 un, I mean, unbelievable way. So okay. um, what happened was sometime in la- ma- August or September last month, mm-hmm. somebody, some random trainer called me looking at my generative AI word on LinkedIn. Okay. And she said, see, there's a cement company who wants to understand generative AI. Can I, can you do a two hour session? Okay. I said, yes. Mm. So, um, 
and i didn't know who the audience was so i randomly started doing the sales how can uh, generative ai help sales mm-hmm. 20 minute into the conversation their vice president of sales calls me and said so this conversation is over we see value we are doing a 3 day 3 full day conclave in goa but we will extend it to 5 days why don't you come there and do your 2 day session we are interested now i was surprised because i didn't even go through half my content and they are asking me to go to goa so i never mean to go over so i said all right okay that's good <laughs> <laughs> it's goa time right. yeah so they give me a good uh, uh, so they they set my tickets and then i go there mm-hmm. and the night before i am supposed to um, do my training i go I shake hands with the team and i find all of them are harvards i am isb is like all big names okay. now uh-huh. i am zap i am only an engineer so what am i going to teach them but anyway since i have accepted the assignment i said all right let me go do okay. and um, then i started defining the ideal customer profile mm. i used chat gpt mm. but i started defining their ideal customers and i started showing what the aspirations frustrations and motivations of the ideal customers are mm. and i opened their facebook engine and then showed why the sale is not happening okay we have amazing products but they are writing to the entire world mm. now if the entire world is your customer mm-hmm. nobody is your client Got if it. you if, if the entire world is your market nobody is your client nobody is paying you money mm-hmm. and in half an hour uh, uh, so maybe half a day what i did was i opened up the ideal client i established their aspirations motivations frustrations the mistakes they made and where they spent time and i wrote my first marketing message mm-hmm. and the uh, vice president of sales came back and said are you ready to give us service mm. okay and something else magical happened until then my monthly uh, or my monthly fee for a client was about 2 lakhs mm-hmm. and i signed up at 10 lakhs a month and not a question was asked mm. not a single question because most of these people that are seeking your service people who are looking at this pain point are not aware of why their sale is not happening mm. so you make it a science mm. you show them why sales happen you tell your customer why they are in pain mm. and elevate the pain mm. elevate the pain to a point to say okay the solution i have is your only solution Mm-hmm. sales hat yep and in sales when you speak the right language there is no constraint of price correct this this is theory wise i knew this but from that day i have started closing sales left right and center mm. so ask the right questions elevate their pain to say that this is the only solution ask them questions ask them questions and and they will convert mm. the second thing that i have realized mm-hmm. is that price is never 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 a constraint for a sale okay the sale does not happen when the perceived value of what you provide as service does not meet your price point can you repeat that one more time <laughs> sure the sale does not happen and goes into an objection mm-hmm. when the perceived value of the service you provide mm-hmm. does not match your fee mm. right now imagine this you go to a client mm-hmm. you show them why their sales is not happening mm-hmm. you show them that their entire marketing team is not able to create craft that one message that hits the nail on the head mm. and you show them how you do it in half an hour why should a client not pay absolutely yeah and, and he will see that this message is going to hit his customers on the head because he has had hundreds of conversations he had talked to them he knows their pain point and the sale has not happened now if you make this statement the sale is going to happen mm. so 
my point the, again let me come back to the objective of this conversation right i see day in and day out i see so many entrepreneurs who have amazing products mm-hmm. but their entire energy has been spent in creating the product but not selling the product yeah and if you look at the market far inferior products are selling at better price point than these people because they have identified the pain and they are selling a duct tape solution yep Yep. So this that is it. So if you know what these things are, um, a sale can happen. But do you accept all your clients, or do you reserve the need to reject a client, or how, how does it happen? Like, say, for instance, you get an inquiry, you get into that, and we talk about it, and how does it unfold? Yeah. So again, Prashant, this is a solution. This is an answer that changed from uh, August last year. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So previously, I was very eager to take every client. I was right. eager to say yes. So though, though Deloitte taught me a lot about, you know, Deloitte is a snob. Right. After going through nine months of uh, due diligence, they will say you don't deserve us. <laughs> And I, I gave that statement many times. Mm. I used to be a consultant there. now but i didn't learn the lesson but here what has happened is i realized that the more you become desperate mm. to gather a client one is you are making your own compromises mm. two seriously um this is a function of not you not being enjoying your own company mm. you are not happy with the silence that happens mm-hmm. and silence is full of answers it is shouting on the top of your of its voice to say what you are not and what you are mm-hmm. and instead of listening to what your inner self is saying you go commit and then show desperation mm-hmm. the sale may happen mm-hmm. but you are fully in pain mm-hmm. now let me give you an example of why mm-hmm. that happens yeah let's say you convert a guy who who is ready to pay you say 75000 a month okay and you are promising him like say for instance i will take, i will do your linkedin i will finish your um say instagram i will do some, uh, three channels some mm-hmm. three channels you for this guy who has put that 1 lakh aside he that 1 lakh is a very big amount mm. so he will think that magic will happen the day you go on live online right right so uh, one month he will pay you because he has signed up second month he will say pay you saying that ek month mein kya hone wala correct <laughs> teesra month review ko bulayega bas 3 lakh diya main already what is happening right now you will try to give some uh, give some answer he will listen to you reluctantly fourth month he is sleeping in your head hmm because that one lakh is a lot because he is coming from a position of desperation right if he is the the abundant mindset guy he will you will not have this problem mm. okay so what then happens is you will start listening to him more and providing your service less mm. you are not focusing on your client behavior and analytics but you are worried about your client's behavior mm. how do you classify him right so mm-hmm. if the if the uh, mindset does not match i am not taking them as clients And I will tell them right on their face, sir. You are not ready. These are the reasons why I do not believe. I believe, or I believe that I will not be able to get you to succeed. While the market is full of opportunity, mm-hmm. um, this is one mindset change that you will have to engineer in yourself. Mm. Trust me, Prashant. Yeah. The day you are able to make this statement with full confidence, clients will come behind you. I'm, they may not get your full service mm. but they will say sir can you tell me this bit can i improve this bit how can i improve this bit if this pain is resolved i will probably be able to do some more and i have had clients who have done that come back for service mm. yeah i mean why not they will come back because you are addressing their pain points and i think you know sometimes while people are budgeting for marketing they are not thinking long you know they they think as you said that it's a immediate fix that you give money to some expert he's going to come on board and he's going to do the magic but it's a plant what you're growing and the fruit is what you need so you have to water it you have to give sunlight you have to give whatever it is required so that 
it yields the fruits of success and that's a process and that that requires a lot of listening to your customers doing experiments failing fast and all those jargons what we keep hearing everywhere but it's a process what i believe to chetanya and True. Uh, True. you know some, sometimes you know what happens is that the customers are there they they come for a transactional work for you mm-hmm. they reach out to you hey you know what can you just do only this part of it and you right. may have a solution which will solve their problem but they mm-hmm. are only looking for a quick fix maybe one one part of it how do you convert a customer in a long term client because everyone here who is working in some kind of direct sales in direct sales pre sales post sales be it software hardware d2c anything we have these these all customers prospects who come for one thing you know i would like to know your opinion and your experience into this particular aspect sure so uh, prashant by design i have some capacity for pro bono mm. okay so that is my leverage to use uh, against some of these opportunities mm-hmm. uh, it also depends on the domain the customer comes from mm. okay say for instance there was this company uh, it didn't work out for a different reason but there was this company from the us who reached out to me uh, on linkedin mm. okay and the founder was very passionate and he he was doing some um, uh, personalized nutrition right so he would get you to do some tests and they have a device Mm-hmm. that will sit on your finger it's an iot okay and based on that it will it is measuring all your uh, stats and why uh, vitals and then when you go to a restaurant he will give you exactly what protein and what nutrition you should have <coughs> so you go to the cook ask for something and then you mix these powders and eat it's a brilliant concept wow Uh-huh. and the analytics they were generating was awesome and the who is who of the us surgeons were impressed mm-hmm. when i saw the actually i didn't believe that this will work uh, but when they gave me the working model and uh, once i saw the analytics i am a maths guy so the moment i saw the numbers i said okay this is a 20 billion dollar company in the next 5 years i said yes mm-hmm. and he only wanted a pitch deck out of it okay now not only did i give him pitch deck i gave him probably 10 other deliverables which he will use it left right and center for the next two years mm. with the with my logo at the, at the bottom mm. okay two things one he might choose to delete it which i, I cannot control then there is a morality problem it's not a solution problem mm-hmm. two he will i might mean, see he, uh, the the project did not go further because the partners he had were not what not visionaries mm-hmm. they wanted to try something they wanted to stay in the comfort of their job and try something mm-hmm. to spare a billion but didn't happen but i am sure this guy will come and he's not going to stop here he's going to take the entrepreneurship route mm-hmm. and when he comes back he's going to sign up for with me okay okay so this is what happened in the industry side Now, mm-hmm. when I was in Deloitte, so you know Yammer, right? Have you heard of yeah. Yammer? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So in Yammer, um, okay. By the way, in all my years of Deloitte, I didn't take one project Deloitte gave. I <laughs> I brought my own projects. <laughs> so how I would do that? Uh, I would go to Yammer and look at a lot of these conversations that are happening between business managers and teams. Correct. Go, so, put your finger there, put your foot there, try to get some small work. get some pitch some small pilot and then convert that into a big project now in each one of those projects mm-hmm. i always gave them 400 to 500% of what they wanted and the other 400% was what they will use in the next steps mm. so what are you telling them is that boss i have created an opportunity not only here but i am also giving you the next steps that you need to take mm-hmm. to take a bigger pie out of the plan right now these are big surprises that any customer wants right so without compromising on anything mm-hmm. without losing out on your uh, self respect what else can you do to wow the customer more value what value yes. can you provide through that yes totally agree to that and also chatanya okay folks uh, folks who are listening to us you may raise your hands and we will take your questions in a few minutes and if you want to dms 
so you can put a dm do not hesitate to connect with us that's how you stay updated about our events and guests and get to learn and also get to see what they're posting and learn from them so coming back to the topic chatanya so what i was saying is now this is very interesting that how you're converting customers into clients long term how you're giving them value proactively without they asking when you have identified that the opportunity is there and i i can provide them help but they are not looking for it but still going ahead and giving it to them now this mm. this is this is now sometimes you know a lot of people now this is a little bit uh, side track a lot of people have this logical reasoning which comes in their head the customer is has asked for this why should i give them more they should pay me that kind of mindset comes up so what do you have to talk you know what do you have to say about that okay so um this is a very good question prashant i have a completely different philosophy to this uh uh-huh. most of these people who are talking about this have their resources on bench right mm. now what are you doing with your bench then <laughs> you have to give them something realistic right right rather than letting them sit why don't you get them to do some real client work and say okay do this Mm. get this thing done let us over deliver mm. now what is happening is you are setting an example for your team mm. so the team knows you are you are not only setting your competency you are showcasing a testimonial of your competency but you are also getting a team to believe that you know we are not those chindi chul look only this much and try to cut edges <laughs> sorry for the long uh, maybe that may not sound uh, professional but that's the attitude that's the moment you leave that and become an abundant mindset you know what there are times when customers walk into your office and you do not even know where they come from mm. and they are coming from these additional pieces of work that you have done mm-hmm. that has not been used they have show this guy has showcased it somewhere else and they have seen value in what you are doing mm. Mm. right so do a little more that does not mean you will cut all your budgets and do everything but identify the next two three steps and where are they going what are they going to do in the next three steps what is happening is that way you are actually trying to test your understanding of the domain one right two you can you are showcasing your customer that i can think beyond the scope of your work mm. which means that Okay, every entrepreneur today has a hundred gorillas on their back, each weighing him down. <laughs> right? So true. So if you, yeah, if you can show them that you are capable of handling a gorilla and he does not have to worry about it, mm. you are the one picking the order. Yeah, having this abundance mindset, and also people call it the growth mindset. And you know, you are in the market to serve. You are in the market to provide service or build the product, and you know, you know, sell the product. so why right. not give them the taste of what all is there in the menu that's the mindset which is going to get more people in your restaurant and that's right. how you know in 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 fmcg you see right sometimes you buy a talcum powder or a deodorant or a soap and you get something free that's how they promote their new products and let sure. the customers get a taste of it yep i can totally connect to that what you said and uh, we have a question jatanya I have a couple of sure. more questions for you but let's take Vipinder Kaur over to you. Uh, good evening Prashant and uh, good evening everyone. Now uh, so uh, this is really a very nice topic talk of the town so thank you so much. Sure. So uh, I really like Jatanya's you know real life examples and uh, the in the story form also so he presents in a very well manner so i always have a question mm-hmm. so well uh, he has presented in in very all the like i don't have any question but still there is something in my mind that i want to ask him sure. uh, so the question is chetanya that how can businesses leverage emerging technologies and digital channels to expand their customer base in like 2024 Awesome. This, um, Yupinder, thank you so much. I, oh, this is a great question. All right, I will have multiple layers of onion to peel on this. Okay. Yeah, sure. So okay. Now, 
when you say emerging technologies, there are so many technologies that people don't even use. Mm. Okay. Right. Now let's, let's, so before you meet, can you let your reputation go meet your customer even before they think of you? Let me give you an example. Mm -hmm. Say you go meet, all of us go to meetings, all of us go to uh, networking events. Now everybody goes there and say, I am this, this, this. Mm. And um, without even batting, can you connect me to so and so? Mm -hmm. So the first question, how? so all these are autopilot questions. People are probably living in autopilot forever. Mm -hmm. They have not, they don't have the time to stop pause, ponder and see where they are going. Mm. Now, can you break the pattern and say, Prashant, it was nice meeting you. How can I help you? Where can I connect? I'm not asking anything. Mm. Okay. Now, now Prashant is wondering, what the hell did I hear? Why is he not asking me for a reference? <laughs> <laughs> the second question. Oh, okay. Chaitanya, can you give me a card? Mm. I say, no, I don't have a card. Okay, Prashant, do one thing. I have this QR code printed on my sleeve on the T-shirt. Can you scan this? Mm -hmm. And okay, so what am I going to do, Chaitanya? No, no, scan this and see. Now you scan the QR code and on this, a beautiful booklet opens. Mm -hmm. A booklet of what I do, my services mm -hmm. with video-based examples. Mm -hmm. And... I will say, Prashant, you are in Bangalore. Would you want to hear this in Kannada? Mm. And then the whole booklet converts itself into Kannada. Mm. Now, imagine this. Prashant has met a thousand people in the last four months. But nobody ever gave him an experience. Mm. Now, Prashant can forget Chaitanya. Mm -hmm. Prashant can forget that meeting, but he will never forget that experience of some random guy showing up and asking him to scan a t-shirt mm -hmm. in which he made an entire presentation of his business mm -hmm. in a booklet with videos. Mm -hmm. Now, how many surprise elements does it pack? Yeah, quite a few and very quickly. Right. Exactly. Yeah. right. And... Then I say, Prashant, can I do something? Yeah, what, 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 what is it? Can I send you this newsletter once in 15 days? Mm. You would say, yes, why not? Right? Now, Prashant may not have business with me. I may not have business with Prashant. But Prashant is running a talk show where a lot of big guys come. Mm -hmm. And they'll ask Prashant, what's new? What mm. have you seen? And you will, I'm sure you will speak about this. Mm. And when you speak, you are speaking with conviction. You are not saying, Chaitanya, will you want to? You know, you should try working with him. No, you will say, I met some amazing experience. I have had a great experience. Why don't you talk to him and see what happens? Mm. And most of my international clients happened that way. Understood. Right? So, Vipinder, to keep the answer short, there are hundred ways of doing things. Small technologies, small QR codes, small uh, mini web pages, many mobile landing pages have not been used to 3% to 5% of their completed capacity. Mm. Uh, yeah, thank you so much, Itanya. I recently uh, seen your uh, videos also that were awesome. And uh, thank you so much for sharing so many ideas what we can do with technology. Thank you, Prashant. Thank you, everyone. You're most welcome to be there. Thank you. And folks, show me some love here. You are listening to us. Is this adding value? Are you enjoying the conversation? Give me a cheer. Give me a thumbs up. All right. Thank you. And you have a question. You raise your hand and you're going to be up on the stage. Thank you. So moving to the next pointer, what I had, Chaitanya, is that life is very short. A lot of customers, a lot of prospects keep coming, meeting. How do we organize the thing? Uh, so that maybe the customer doesn't want you now, you have identified, but he wants to connect with you maybe after six months or maybe next year. How do you keep in touch with these uh, prospects so that they still remember you when the need arises? Uh, a bit of this, uh, Prashant, I've answered in my previous question that Vipinder asked. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, you meet any random business guy. Um, first question, if you ask them, where is your lead magnet? 99% of the people will say, I don't have a lead magnet. Ah. 
So, how are you farming for your leads? Mm. Now, create a lead magnet. Mm -hmm. Now, what can that lead magnet be? Can be a booklet, can be a swipe file, can be a few videos, and probably be a newsletter, Mm -hmm. a newsletter with videos, a newsletter with changing content. Mm -hmm. Now, how difficult is it to get a newsletter which has the the appearance looks the same. The real estate looks the same, but the content changes. The content changes. Yeah. So when you get people something that will break their monotony and bring them to pause and listen, mm-hmm. you will make those connections. Got it. And because a newsletter is something that keeps going out into the market, it keeps bringing back people to look at, look at what you're seeing. And done. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, imagine this, all right? So, we anyway go to meetings. Right. And when we go to meetings, we give business cards. Correct? Mm-hmm. Right? Why not give a business card which looks like a metal, which is crafted out of metal? Why not? Sure thing. Yeah. yeah. And on that, don't have anything on the metal card. Just give it a small QR code and ask them to scan it. Mm. And tell them, uh, every time you see this, when, whenever you want to see something new, scan this and tell me what is loaded inside. Mm. So you are giving them an experience, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? Say if you are a if you are a sweet shop owner, mm-hmm. you anyway give a sweet shop sweet box, right? Mm-hmm. On the sweet box, you have your logo and some random words, mm-hmm. nothing that get the customer to come back to you. Mm-hmm. While you're giving them this sweet box, why don't you add one more step? After they get the sweet box, Mm -hmm. have one boy outside and ask them to scan the QR code. Why? Mm -hmm. Now, when you scan this QR code, you will receive an SMS with a discount code for the next 45 days. Wow. Wow. Right? (laughs) Then, along with it, there is a booklet. Uh-huh. Now, if you buy Samia from us, uh-huh. give me a recipe that you will use to make a sweet and we will use this recipe in our video channel or we will put it in this sweet box again. The next time you open this, your sweet your sweet will be on this. Uh-huh. And when your sweet is selected, you will get 10 months of purchases free uh-huh. or 10,000 rupees worth purchase free. Now, you will get a few thousand recipes, Mm -hmm. all of them user-generated. You didn't spend one rupee on it. Mm -hmm. And what you will do as soon as you receive, you will do a contest, stamp it on your name because it is your IP. Mm -hmm. Say, Vipinder sent me a a recipe, I would stamp it on my name and send it back to Vipinder. Mm. Now, what will Vipinder do? She will be very happy that a business house has recognized her recipe mm-hmm. and make it the mission of her life to send it to all those people who are on her WhatsApp, Telegram, Facebook, Instagram. Yep. Without spending a rupee, you are sending it to an average of 2,000 people. This is so cool. At least, this, is yeah, so this video cool. is on your YouTube, user-generated content. Mm-hmm. And... You will never have to do SEO in your life if you do this. Hmm. So, as I said, every every interaction with your brand can be engineered. Hmm. So, this is wow. You know, give them those experiences. Give them those wow factor. Life is lived between, between moments that take your breath away. So, how frequently do you give those moments? Define how strong your brand is. So... It's all about branding. It's all about thinking ahead of the time. It's all about using whatever you can to get the user generated content. And that is very authentic as well. You don't have to spend any money and coming from real people with the motivation and happiness of using your product and service. Absolutely stupendous, Tatania. And, you know, we scheduled it only for 40 minutes here, but happy to take any questions. If anybody has, um, they can raise their hands. And, uh, okay, we have a question. Krishnakant, over to you. Uh, sir, uh, any example from uh, pharma sector, please uh, tell more about the marketing for pharma sectors. Okay. 
Krishnakant, unfortunately, you are in a domain that is completely regulated. Mm. But you are one of the highest spenders in marketing. Mm -hmm. So every product of yours has a specific budget. For many other domains, the entire company has a budget. Whereas in pharma, every product line has a budget. Mm. And every product line produces books. And by law, they are supposed to produce books. And you know what is the biggest pain point of pharma? You spend all the money in creating those booklets that nobody reads. Wow. Now, so what I did for Sanofi is this. Mm -hmm. It was a two-pronged strategy. And that became my business because, you know, the ones I worked for did not use it again. Mm -hmm. um, so what I did was all these pharma companies send a lot of these gifts to their doctors, correct? Mm -hmm. Pens, pen stands, whatever. On each one of them, stamp a QR code and when the doctor scans their QR code, you send product information. And because the product information is evolving every day because there is so much testing happening, there is so much of product, people working on it, there are so many people giving you feedback, get those videos in there and then give them those videos to see. Now that big makes it, imagine this, you have a pen stand on a doctor's desk which is branding, showcasing your brand, but it is also become a private radio channel. It is no longer a dumb pen stand. It is a radio channel. And what can happen is, if you can give this user content to customers on a poster that you give, they are captive audience. You go to any doctor, you are waiting for the next half an hour or so. Mm -hmm. So ask them to pick up their phone and scan a particular thing that the doctor would want to see. And you make sure that you give that, deliver that video there and then all these kids that are making a noise are becoming frustrated because they cannot do anything and the doctors will start interacting with that content. And then the pharma industry can actually find out what the younger population wants. Mm. You might engineer their uh, interaction capacity also within the boundaries of the law. Yeah. Right? So, one is that the corporate... Thank you, Sorry, yeah, go ahead. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, any uh, uh, ideas for the startups? Just like uh, one formula uh, formulation that can, that I have been created. So that's why I'm asking those things. Okay, Krishna Kant. What we can do is see. Uh, you know how to connect with me. Send a LinkedIn connection. Let's have a conversation because it will become a very deep dive conversation, and probably the others may not be interested in it. I'm I'm more than happy to help. Um, just connect with me on LinkedIn and let's have this conversation this week only. I'll not also take too long to get your get give you a time slot. Okay, 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 sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thanks so much for coming up to ask the question. Yeah, and you, you know what? Uh, these questions are so important. And folks, you can go ahead and connect and follow both of us on LinkedIn to stay connected. Do share your feedback. Chaitanya, what's your USP? Why do people hire you? How do you help them? You have told a lot of things, right? So you have told us uh, stories and things. Where, how are you different than the other products, other uh, services so, in the market? Yeah. Super. Prashant, one thing is um, I, I really admire the way you do these things. You keep it lively and it doesn't feel like that I'm... I'm in giving you an interview, but it's like a <laughs> two conversation between two old friends. This is and, bro and, talk. Bro talk, a <laughs> new new term in the town, you know. <laughs> and it's what three months since we met, right? And yeah. Oh, okay. Awesome. Okay, so Prashant, now based on your you've been a corporate guy. So mm -hmm. for as far as much as much as you know, mm -hmm. do you, what what is a marketing team? Is it a profit center or a cost center? Mm -hmm. It's I'm asking your question. Center, is profit it center. Yeah. Marketing. Marketing. Oh, marketing is a cost center. Total cost. Right. Yeah. Now, for me, anybody who works with me, each one of my clients, for them, marketing is a profit center after nine months. Oh, oh that is so good. That is so good. <laughs> so I get I put money into their pockets and say rightfully I am taking what is mine. Mm -hmm. So if I put twenty lakhs for marketing, mm -hmm. you are not spending. You are put. I am putting twenty lakhs into their pocket and say I will take fifteen lakhs. Mm -hmm. Which client will 
subject. Right. Okay. So now how do I do that? Mm. Let me give you an example. Sure. You know of these, um, you know marathons, right? Yep. And in marathons, by law, you are supposed to give a booklet. Mm. Correct? Mm. Now, Tata's at the TCS, the Tata board, has mm. a had a unique problem. Every time, they, they do four marathons in India and they do about 12 or 14 marathons across the world. Mm -hmm. And everywhere, the problem is the same. Mm -hmm. they, they painstakingly produce those videos. Uh, Tiger Shroff is their brand ambassador. Chandra is the chairman of Tata board. He comes and does an interview and the booklets are made. And the, the, the Tata Mumbai Marathon, which is run by 1.4 lakh people, mm -hmm. picked up only 40 or 400 PDFs. That's it. And the problem that they have is, imagine this 1.4 lakh people mm -hmm. assembling on the marine drive, not knowing where to run. Mm. Because the government changes some things every time and you are handling chaos. Mm -hmm. So this was the problem statement. So what I did <coughs> is I took, <coughs> I took their manual, mm -hmm. converted that into a video-based book. Mm -hmm. Where all the instructions are given in videos. Mm -hmm. So Chandra himself comes and tells them how to run. Why should they run? Mm. Tiger Shroff comes the day before and gives the update. You imagine Tiger Shroff be playing the role of a news anchor. Mm. Comes in mm. and tells you that the government changed these things mm -hmm. and the run will happen like this. Mm. Mm -hmm. Now. The number went from 400 to some uh, 48,000 or 49,000. Wow. Wow. Right? Massive. Okay. Massive, but still not enough. <laughs> Giving Given 1.4 lakh people. Yeah. Now, right? So, how do we do this? So, then when I started looking at what happens in the Tata marathons, I realized that there were like 25 people who have run the marathon for more than a decade. Mm. which means they have been physically active mm -hmm. and they were loyal fans of the Tata Marathons. Mm -hmm. So I brought them in, took their interviews, mm -hmm. gave them two specific pages on which their interviews were posted. Mm -hmm. And then the number went from 48,000 to 6 lakhs. Wow. Wow. That's a, okay. That's number. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Approximately. So I have something around 6 lakhs. Mm -hmm. Not enough. Mm -hmm. Maybe for everybody, it is enough for a sucker, for opportunity and for some marketing. I'll, can we push this a little more? <laughs> so what we then did was we gave exclusive versions of these magazines where the front cover was the runner. Mm -hmm. Now this went on fire mm -hmm. from 6 lakhs to 29 lakhs in two nights. Wow. Wow. Because each one of these runners has a community of around 300, 400 runners. Mm -hmm. And they have already touched some 6,000 to 7,000 people in which who came in for training, but they were not serious runners, but they still had interactions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All these people have some 40, 50 people at least on their WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. the, book, the book went like wildfire. Mm -hmm. Now, suddenly we had like, you know what, 28 lakh, 29 lakh people seeing it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then what then happened was uh, a very strange conversation i was having i was trying to talk to one of the sponsors on the book mm -hmm. so he said sir every har ek saal 20 lakh dalte hain sir usme kya ja raha hai kya nahi ja raha pata hi nahi chal i said so i will give you one space would you want to advertise mm -hmm. he said yes then I said, the exclusivity is that you will put this on YouTube, but the video will be dead. It will be accessible only through this book. Mm. He said, yes. Mm. Since I'm anyway spending, I don't mind. Mm -hmm. So they get a video of that and then we post it in this booklet. Mm -hmm. And then next day I told him, so many people have seen your book video with this device from this location mm -hmm. so long mm -hmm. and so many times. Mm. And that he was amazed to say, okay, oh, is this, can you give me the statistics? Mm -hmm. Can you give me the data? I mm -hmm. gave him the data. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the next thing I know is in the next two hours, the Seco watch company is standing out of, outside Tata's office to say, I want to place an ad on your book. Mm -hmm. Right? 
So what then happened was we started taking people, Tata board put their hands, then um, Tata cars division started putting their hands. Mm-hmm. Uh, the uh, the energy drink people started putting their hands. The uh, energy, uh, what is it? Energy bars started putting their hands. Mm-hmm. And without our knowledge, the, the book shot into revenue. Wow. A book that was the most useless piece of the entire marathon ecosystem mm. became the epicenter of the marathon. Mm. And then it started giving them revenues Excellent. because the ad cost something, right? Yeah. So imagine this, you, you, you say you are a shoe company, like say, let's say mm-hmm. Asics mm-hmm. and you have a certain budget, say 10 lakhs. Mm-hmm. Would you want to place an ad in the Hindu or the Times of India or in the booklet where 1.6 lakh marathoners are running, Mm -hmm. 1 lakh people to 15 lakh people view the marathon Mm -hmm. and another 60, 70,000 support the marathon. You are looking at around 15 lakh people getting in your ecosystem. Mm -hmm. Where would you want to place an ad? On the newspaper, you don't get anything. It's just money down the drain. Mm -hmm. Whereas here, you will get analytics of how many people saw it, from where, how long, using what device, what is their demographic, psychographic, all that. Hmm. So that's that's how. So I create these experiences, the booklets that store information with varied data, varied um, uh, media, and then make that a viral thing. And then from there, I take collect uh, revenues in terms of ads, and then I say this is my percentage. Hmm. So that's how I make um, marketing a profit center. Very well. And of course, it will be a pleasure for someone to work with you when you are helping them make more money, not just customers, but clients. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Wonderful, wonderful, Chaitanya. Who else has got a question here? Anybody else who wants to have it right now or would like to... You can always ping us later. I have pinged the channel of the YouTube channel in the comments. Please subscribe to that to get the recording so that you can refer to this conversation. And uh, Chaitanya, what are your closing notes? Um, Just keep listening to your customers. Um, uh, Look at uh, what is happening in the technology space. And Marketing does not necessarily have to be high spend. Mm -hmm. Only those people who lack imagination go for high spend marketing, not required. You just need to address one pain point of your customers. Um, Have a lead magnet. Please remember this. A lead magnet can be everything in business. If you don't have a lead magnet, you are probably saying no to 98% of your revenue. So have your lead magnet ready and start spreading it across the globe. And then see simple, you have 8 billion people and you need 80 customers to get your life with. What is the ratio? Wow, wonderful. (laughs) A food for thought for sure. 80 customers you need out of 8 billion people. Very good one. The mindset abundance was my favorite in today's conversation, Chaitanya. And... uh, Audience, did you enjoy the conversation? Let us know. Show us some love here. Give me those hearts. Give me those thumbs ups. Give me those applause, whatever you can. Chaitanya, it's a great pleasure talking to you. Conversations filled with value. We have audience who enjoyed this. And uh, I want to thank you once again for being on my event. And uh, folks, Do not hesitate to connect with us. Thank you, Prashant. It was a pleasure talking to you. And audience, thank you so much for being with us on a holiday. And uh, thanks for listening in. Thanks, everyone. Stay tuned. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Have a great evening, afternoon. Bye.